Hey, what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're going over this Bosch 18 volt Pro Factor, seven and a quarter inch bi-turbo brushless circular saw. Well, that's a mouthful. They call this the strong arm, and this is the circular saw that you've always wanted, or is it? But it is a track saw that you've always wanted, or is it? Stay tuned to find out. All right guys, so this right here is Bosch's GKS18V-25GCN. Wow, that's a really long model number. So if it sounds familiar, you've pretty much uh, probably seen our other video, whereas we've reviewed the GKS18V-25CN, right? Which is almost exactly the same saw, except without the G, right? So this one actually has the G, and that G means it has some upgrades. So um, this one is in their Pro Factor lineup, and just in case you're not familiar with the Bosch stuff, Bosch makes, you know, uh, 12 volt tools, 18 volt tools, and a bunch of stuff like that. But in order to elevate, you know, the Pro Factor or the Pro Grade or commercial grade type stuff, they've introduced what they call the Pro Factor lineup, right? So what that generally means is that all the tools are generally brushless, have maximum performance, and it's designed to be used with their Pro Factor batteries, which is, you know, pretty much their eight amp hour or 12 amp hour batteries. And those batteries, the only thing really special about them besides, you know, Bosch's electronics and stuff is that they use 21700 series cells and, you know, they come in capacities of eight and 12, right? The 12 is interesting. We're gonna have to drill into that a little bit later. But anyways, that's what the Pro Factor lineup really means, okay? So this is in their Pro Factor lineup and it, you know, commands performance of their top tier uh, tools on the market, right? So we're gonna drill into that. Anyways, the point is, um, if you've seen the other video, you know, we've had a bunch of stuff to say about, you know, the 25 CN without the G, but this one actually, like I said, has some upgrades and it has really nice upgrades. Some of the stuff, you know, that we've, you know, complained about in the other one. But before we get too far into that, let's go take a look at the marketing hype and then we'll bring it in closer and take a better look at it. So this right here is Bosch's strong arm Pro Factor Performance Circular Saw. It is a seven and a quarter inch circular saw on their 18 volt platform. It has a two and a half inch cut capacity. It has eco mode, which is interesting because you would never think there's eco mode on a tool. It's almost like you're driving an electric car or something like that. It has bi-turbo brushless technology featuring brushless high performance motor and drivetrain system engineered to take full advantage of the additional power generated by the core 18 volt Pro Factor batteries. One touch depth adjustment, that's actually really nice. Onboard user interface provides provides uh, speed control settings with up to six settings and tool feedback. Is uh, connect, connected ready means um, you, there's a module you can buy. Um, you can put in, pretty much put it in connected up to the Bosch Toolbox app, you know, to get feedback and tracking and stuff like that. It, the bell's up to 50 degrees, has an auxiliary handle, and the feature that folks are gonna find the most interesting is the track compatibility. And, you know, for using a track gives you fast, straight cuts, and it is not only going to be compatible with the Bosch track, it will also work with other manufacturer tracks. We're going to drill into that later. Has a convenient electronic brake that stops the blade quickly, has a pivoting dust port, you know, it runs on their 18 volt lithium ion um, battery lineup, has a height of around 11.3 inches, length of around 15.9 inches, and max depth of cut at 45 degrees is actually one and three sixteenths of an inch. And because it's a variable speed, it can range anywhere between 2,500 to 5,000 RPMs. So according to the marketing hype, the weight is about 9.5 pounds and that is without the battery. So this right here is obviously the business end of the saw or the right part of the saw if you're holding it right here at the grip. And as it was with the Dash 25 uh, CN, there's not too much really difference going on with here in this, you know, um, a guard and dust collection system. Although for whatever reason, I do feel like the uh, this model, the dust collection system works a little bit poorer if that's even a word, than um, the non-track compatible model. And that's really subjective. I know I'm just saying, I just wanted to point that it just seems like that, although it seems like it would be exactly the same, but for whatever reason, I just feel like it's way poor on this one, okay? So while we're talking about that, let's go ahead and talk about the shoe. So on the shoe, there's one pore here for, you know, rip guide. There's no on, nothing on the back uh, side, but you know, that's okay mainly because, you know, if you're buying this, you're gonna be buying it for, you know, track compatibility reasons, right? While we're also looking at this, let's go ahead and say, this uh, saw actually has two places for uh, depth 
uh, or bevel locking mechanisms, if you want to call it that, right? One on the back here and one on the front here. On the non-track compatible model, it did not have um, it in two locations. So I did want to point that out because that is an upgrade on this one. And just like the non-track compatible model, the uh, dust port does swivel, you know, 360 degrees and it's not like you have to roll it back by any means, but that's what's really going on here. So moving around to the front, on the front part of the saw, this is exactly where the bevel adjustment guide is, or the bevel adjustment mechanism is, right? It's a metal lever, black lever, and it usually works pretty well, pretty quick changes. Uh, the bevel uh, measurement system is actually, you know, just black uh, plastic with white um, bevel markings put on there and it will bevel up to 50 degrees, right? So if you look right here, it will bevel up, uh, I gotta get it unlocked. It will bevel up to 50, right, real quick, and it's not like it has a, uh, another you know, button or something that you have to press in order to make it go past 45. It will straight up just go right past 45, okay? So that is something to keep in mind if you are going to be using that. So while we're on the front here, this is right where the uh, 45 degree uh, cut line sight lines are. Right here is the zero degrees sight line. And um, we're gonna get into the really interesting part of it. If you are using this with the Bosch track, this is pretty much you know the line where the track would go, right? And this green part right here, as you guessed it, is where the Fest tool track would go. And if you are a track saw user, you know that the Festool saw will work on the Makita track and vice versa, AKA the uh, Festool will work on the Makita track. So this green uh, part right here is actually where you would use, you know, the Festool or the Makita track. And uh, we're gonna drill more into that just in a little bit, right? Other than that, other stuff going on here is right here is the spindle lock if you are doing blade changes. And this right here is a nice auxiliary handle. And moving on to the side here, um, this part, just as with the non-track compatible model, is pretty short and narrow in terms of, you know, the how much the motor sticks out. And that's nice because if you are using a big framing square or any kind of framing square or speed square, um, it will not, you know, bump into it. So you don't have to, you know, raise it up and kind of walk over that, but um, it is really flush. So you can make, you know, quick speed uh, square cut right there. Um, and not too much going on there. Standard Bosch uh, marketing, you know, emblems and signs and, you know, Bosch bi turbo brushless, that kind of stuff going on, right? So, Moving around quickly to the back here, not no frills, no thrills, pretty standard here. Um, this is where the hex Allen keeper blade change would go. And I haven't had any issues with it falling out, even though we have been using it for right around two weeks or so. Um, and like I said, the back bevel adjustment here, right? So before we go into the depth guide adjustment, let's go ahead and talk about the other stuff going on right here. So if you look at this right here, there is a screen and I'm drop a battery in there for you. So if you look at this screen right here um, on the top part, um, there's a lot of stuff going on here with this screen, right? It's, it's a user feedback type thing and it has colors in it, right? So it's really in like three colors. Um, right now it's green, right? And if it gets to like low, it'll turn to like a yellow orangish color in terms of battery. And if there's something wrong and it's trying to tell you, you know, something is not right, it'll, it'll be red, right? So um, on here, this is also the uh, thermal indicator. So if it's like overheating, this thing will come up. If you're using connected toolbox stuff, you know, this like square will light up. And obviously here is the battery power fuel gauge that is right here that's lit up with the, you know, the four bars. And you see this um, five right here. This is actually the uh, variable speed setting, so to say, right? So this saw will go from, you know, um, five, six, eco, and then it'll start going that back down. When it's in eco, you really see this eco box light up. It'll go back to six, five, four, three, two, one, right? And then if you press it again, it'll go back to two all the way back to six. I've almost always used it on six. Um, there's there's some cuts out there, some clips of us cutting on each setting, right? But it just seems really awkward, almost like an oxymoron to me that you know you would have the word eco on the power tool, but you know, it is what it is. I guess if, if you only have one battery because you just left the charger at home or in the shop or whatever, and you need to get through the day, I guess you could use it on eco. So that's, you know, pretty nifty to have there, but it just doesn't seem that likely to me. Anyways, the point is that it is there and that's a nice user screen that does exist there, right? So um, let's go ahead and talk about, continue to talk about the backside since we're here. Go ahead and talk about the quick uh, depth change mechanism. 
So um, just like the uh, non-track compatible model, this part right here where it's indicating you know, the depth adjustment or depth guide is actually a black sticker with white lettering. Um, and I don't really see the point in that mainly because you know, I could argue that you know, they, if they stamped it in, um, you know, they, they would have to you know, make a different model for or different like, you know, um, I forget what they call it, mold or whatever for um, you know, millimeters or, or, or centimeters or inches or whatever. But it's actually just a sticker, right? And on the sticker, it actually has inches and millimeters. So you know, that point is moot in a way, right? They really should have just stamped it in. Anyways, point is, it's a sticker on the backside. I can't imagine it getting too heavily used by any means, mainly because you know, most people are doing really accurate cuts are not going to be looking at this. They're really going to be just measuring directly from the blade, okay? so. There is that. Um, the other thing to point out here is that this um, um, rail guide, um, I can't even think of what the word is. It's not a rack and pinion type thing, but um, the, the gears or rails or whatever you want to call it, it's plastic. And that's, I think, is a major fail, mainly because, you know, if you're using this, you're probably going to be doing a lot of depth adjustments. And I can't imagine the plastic holding up too well. Sure, it's power tool plastic. It's probably, you know, probably some kind of glass reinforced fibers or something like that. But um, you know, just to have that part of plastic just seems like a high risk, especially in, if you're going to be, you know, holding weight of the saw and stuff like that on it. So that is something to keep in mind, but you know, I haven't seen any of those things fail so far, but, um, it is plastic. So just keep note of that. Right. All right. So now let's go talk about what everybody really wants to know, right? The track part and the fast, uh, depth adjustment, right? So if you look on the top right here. And there's a lot of stuff going on. First, let's go ahead and look at this side mainly because this is where the connected module will go if you were to buy that purchase uh, separately. Uh, you know, unscrew this, put it in here, put it back, it's pretty good to go, right? On the top here, you have a uh, ambidextrous safety switch. You do have to engage uh, at least one side in order to pull the trigger and, and you know, get the saw going. And on the top right here is where the uh, depth adjustment uh, system is. And this depth adjustment system I have, I don't know, I have mixed feelings about. I don't like it, but it is nice that it does exist um, in a way. But the reason I don't like it mainly because is in order to engage or work this, it's a two-state system. You have to pull this back, right? While, and then while holding it back, you have to press this forward, right? So it becomes really awkward to use. Let's see if I can get, show you a better view here, right? In order to make this work, wow. Just failing all over this video, right? So um, in order to make this work, you have to pull this back and then, and then push forward while holding this back. So that actually, you know, it, it's really awkward because you're going one direction, then exactly going the opposite direction while holding down force in that opposite direction, right? So you can't just, you know, pull this back and then go forward. It doesn't work like that. You have to hold it back and then forward, right? So it's a really awkward motion to get going and I understand the reason for it needing to be, you know, two stage for safety reasons, but I feel like they could have come up with some other better design to make that really work, mainly because if you are using a track saw and like I've used a Makita track saw all the time, this, that motion is just really awkward and you can't get used to it. I have, I've had this and been using it for a little over two weeks and it's just, this is awkward, right? So I haven't gotten used to it. And if you are trying to do a plunge cut with one hand, it becomes super awkward, right? Because in order to make that happen, you really have to one, press the safety down, engage um, the trigger, and then take your thumb off the, you know, the safety lever and while, and then go back to the depth adjustment pull back and push forward and then do it, right? So the entire time um, while you're thinking through that, um, hasn't become, you know, so, you know not thoughtful yet, um, the, the blade is spinning, right? And generally, you know, that's not really too much of a big problem, but it's a small safety concern because you are thinking through certain things. But even on a regular track saw, you'd have to do that anyways um, because you can't really plunge without the blade being engaged, right? So uh, when I was first trying to get through it, it was really awkward, so I did end up using two hands to do it, right? So you press down, engage, and then you, you know, use the second hand to pull back and do this, right? You know, you can't even do it very well either. Um, and then you can really adjust it going this way, right? But if you had to do it with one hand, it's down, engage, pull back, push up, then you can go. Right, so I just keep that in mind because it's just really awkward to get used to. So, anyways, 
So this right here is a Makita track. I've um, had this track for a really long time. It's gone through, you know, a lot of use and it's, it's seen some probably better days, but um, this is obviously the Bosch track saw. So if we take the Bosch track saw, you can drop it right here onto the Makita rails and it slides relatively smooth, right? So it is nice that they did, you know, make it compatible, you know, with the festival system, which inadvertently makes it compatible with the Makita rails. Um, but there are a few downsides to it, right? Like for instance, let's move it forward and adjust it for you real quick. If I move it this way, right? Um, if you are making a beveled cut, on the Makita saw, um, there's usually like some kind of lever or button or something you can engage to keep the saw from, you know, coming off the track, right? So if you're beveling, you know, the weight is going to be falling this way and it, there's really nothing to, to prevent that from happening on this saw with this track. Actually, I don't even see it happening even probably with even with the boss track, but um, it does slide pretty well. The other downside to this is because it's using, you know, not exactly Bosch spec track in a way. There's a little bit of wiggle room or wobble room with it, which you know doesn't really come out too well right now, right? Obviously when you try to demo it. Um, and there's no adjustment thing that you could do to really tighten it up or you know make it um, tight tolerances in a way, right? So um, if you are going to be doing you know really 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 precise cuts, this is probably not going to be the tool for you. But if you can get away with general pr precise cuts, right, like in terms of tolerances within a few millimeters, you're going to be fine with this. The other downside to this, what I've noticed was um, because uh, the shoe is a little bit wide, you can see it's, it kind of sits this much off of here. Um, depending on what you're cutting, sometimes you could be bumping into certain things in certain ways. Could they have made this a little bit slimmer? I mean, if you look at it, they definitely probably could have. Um, but, you know, I'm only using this with Makita track, so I'm not sure what it's going to look like with the uh, Bosch uh, track or the Vestal track if you were to use that by any means, right? So, um, like I said, other than that, it works pretty well. No frills with, uh, going on with this, but I did want to point out that it does work really well, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at this depth here, right? So if you look at it here, plunge, depth, no problem, slide and go. Um, there is one downside um, that I noticed when I was running with this. And if you're cutting really, really, really fast, um, like you, we'll see later when we get to performance testing, it's actually really simple for this salt to jump the track just like that, right? So in order to make sure that doesn't happen with this, mainly because, um, I guess when the engineer this is really designed to be used with the Bosch one, you have to make sure that you know you're actually giving downforce on not only the track but also force moving it forward. So you want to put like a 45 degree downforce on it this way instead of you know with most tracks, a lot of people aren't pushing down as much versus just you know going forward like that. Yes, you could argue that it is um, people are pushing down mainly because they're holding the plunge and holding it down, but this one you do have to be a lot more careful mainly because you do have to consciously put that force downwards just a little bit. So you could also argue that this is not really truly a track saw mainly because the normal state of this saw is for it to be down, right? On a track saw, the normal state of that because you know the plunge mechanisms are spring loaded is for those um, uh, normal state for the track saw is to be up, right? So you're actually putting force on it to plunge it down. Whereas this one, you are plunging it down, but you know, gravity is really taking the force there and it's not spring loaded, so in a say. So that is something uh, I did note when I was, you know, trying to cut some MDF or some um, um, backer cabinet stuff, but you know, just keep that in mind.
All right, let's go take a look at what the numbers say, right? So we ran this uh, GKS18B-25GCN with the eight amp hour Pro Factor battery. And on um, the three tests, just in case, you know, we forgot we run it uh, three tests with the 2330 seconds uh, top LP Top 350 three times, then we also run it on a triple stack three times, then we take the average and that's how we get the score. So just in case you didn't know, that's how we do it. Um, you know, we can come back and circle around that sometime later if you have more questions. But with eight amp hour battery, first run on the double stack, 4.06 seconds, second run, 4.35 seconds. On the third run, 4.23 seconds. If you average the three runs, the three runs comes in at 4.21 seconds on the double stack test. On the triple stack test, um, the first run 6.12 seconds, second run 6.30 seconds, third run 6.10 seconds. You take an average of three runs comes in at 6.17 seconds, all right? So the total performance number of this saw and this battery comes in at a whopping 10 Point three nine seconds, right? So that puts this saw right around, let's just say 12th or 13th place, right between the Makita XS XSH06, which is an 18 volt X2 36 volt saw with a five amp hour battery and the Makita XSR01, which is an LXT, you know, 18 volt X2 36 uh, volt saw with two five amp hour batteries, right? So how does that compare with the other Bosch non-track compatible Pro Factor model, right? Um, the GKS18V-25C, you know, without the G, um, with the Pro Factor battery came in at around 12.07 seconds, right? So you could say, yes, it is a little bit more increase in performance. It does seem to be that way. We did run um, the saw on uh, speed six the entire time, um, as you would pretty much expect, but there is a little bit of improvement um, on that, right? So. Let's go take a look at see what happens and see when you run it on the 12 amp hour battery, right? Because you would think more power, you know, her, 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 she'd be faster, right? So we'll go and take a look at that. On the first run, double stack uh, test, 4.17 seconds. Second run, 4.0 seconds. Third run, 4.05 seconds. You take an average of three runs, comes in at 4.07 seconds. So that is, you know, just a hair faster than uh, the 8 amp hour a Pro Factor one, but it's not like huge by any means, but we're only cutting like two stacks of OSB, right? So soap floor OSB. On the uh, triple stack test, uh, first run 6.21 seconds, second run 6.00 seconds, third run 5.44 seconds. You take an average of three runs, the average comes out to 5.88 seconds, right? So the total performance score of uh, this saw with the 12 amp hour battery comes in at 9.96 seconds, right? with the 12 volt battery. So that is not a huge difference between um, this one and the eight, right? So that puts this saw with, you know, this battery right around 11th place on the leaderboard, right? So as you could argue, you know, we didn't see huge gains mainly because we we're mainly cutting OSB subfloor. Sure, that's probably true. But, you know, in order to make the test as similar as we can possibly make it using the, you know, same density of OSB and subfloor is mainly the reason why we used OSB subfloor, right? Because those are a lot more tightly controlled when they're manufacturing it versus, you know, just some random framing lumber we're picking up at the lumber yard, right? So anyways, take that with a grain of salt. Yes, the number is faster, but it's not huge, right? 9.96 versus 10.39, right? Um, so there is a advantage to doing that. Uh, using the 12 volt battery. Now let's go take, uh, let me tell you what I really think about this 12 volt battery. So I actually really like Bosch batteries. The Bosch I think makes really good batteries in terms of, you know, quality manufacturing and, and cool packs and all kind of fun stuff like that. But I believe the 12 pack exclusive Pro Factor stuff is a really bad idea. And I'm gonna tell you, you should probably not buy the 12 volt packs unless you are heavily invested into the Bosch Pro Factor lineup, for instance, you had this, um, the, you know, the Pro Factor uh, Surgeon and, you know, all kinds of other stuff that they're coming out with these names for, right? Um, to the Surgeon is the 12 inch uh, glide miter saw, right? That uses this 18 volt battery. And the main reason I'm telling you that is not only is this battery heavy, right? Um, this 12 volt battery is only compatible with the Bosch Pro Factor tools. So you cannot use this battery on, you know, the free drill um, 
impact or even the Bosch vacuum or, or sand or anything like that. You can only use this on ProFactor by Turbo brushless tools, right? So if you're gonna do that by any means, um, you've technically kind of created a, like a subcategory or even a higher category or some people think of it as another battery lineup um, within the 18 volt system, which you know doesn't really make too much sense. I understand the reason why they did that, you know, in case you just want to know. Um, the all the pro factor batteries use, you know, use the 21700 cells. So if you stack this many 21700 cells in um, a battery and you put it on a you know motor that was or a tool with a motor that's not designed to use that much power, it's going to burn up the motor really fast. The motor can't take the the power that's getting pushed to it and it can't dissipate the heat, AKA tool failure. So these bitero brushless tools are designed to, you know, run um, um, hotter, more efficient and pull more power, right? But by doing that, you've really kind of segregated some of the tools out of it, right? So if they were gonna do that, my personal preference would have been, you know, just make this like a 36 volt battery. They do have a 36 volt lineup. It is not super popular, but I would have much rather seen, you know, Pro Factor being, you know, in the 36 volt lineup with, you know, 18 volt size tools in a way, if you want to argue, right? So that I would believe would be a better uh, idea, but you know, nobody asked me for my idea, except, you know, since you're watching this video, maybe you are. Um, whereas the eight amp hour batteries are compatible with the Freak, you know, all the other tools, you know, in the lineup that fit this battery, that fit an 18 volt uh, Bosch battery, right? So if you're gonna buy into the Bosch Pro Factor system, um, you could buy this, it's a little pricey, so I'll probably just buy more eights. There is not a huge amount of, you know, performance number di uh, difference between the 12 and the eight, so go with the eight. There you go, I said it, that's all I can really say. Um, now circle back around, what can we say about this tool, right? So um, this tool compared to the non-track compatible model, the non-G model, the 25C, um, is probably the better buy, right? Mainly because you can buy this tool right now, I believe for somewhere around 270, if I remember correctly. And if you find, you know, like a 10% off coupon or whatnot, you could probably get up like 250 or something. So for 250, you're getting a, you know, a top handle circular saw with the blade right. You know, I always thought that was really weird, mainly because, you know, um, if you're a right-handed person, I think most people walking the earth are right-handed, you'd want to see the blade so you can get kind of get better sight lines and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong, you can get sight lines here and it has like a cutout right here where you can see the sight lines pretty well, but it actually makes sense for the blade to be on the left if you're right-handed. Um, I'm not sure why they do that. Maybe it's the whole design thing. The only other thing I could uh, argue would be, you know, the dust is gonna be shooting at you, but this has really, you know, a pivoting dust port, so you could really pivot that away. Anyways, the point is that um, this actually is a great saw compared to over that one, because for about 250-ish, you can buy um, a top handle, blade right um, side one or style circular saw that has track compatibility. Is it a true track saw? And no, not by any means. It doesn't have a riving knife. It's not like fully covered. It doesn't have an actual true uh, plunge mechanism. Um, I don't have the boss track, so I can't tell you all the finicky stuff about that, but um, it, it does work with the rail, uh, track system, you know, other vendors and stuff like that, you know, like Festool, Makita, I think PowerTech is probably one of those off brands. I'm sure it probably works with the Wen one if I had to guess. I'm relatively sure it will not work with the DeWalt track mainly because that one is not compatible with anything except DeWalt. Um, but it does not take full advantage of the track mainly because it doesn't have, like I said, uh, adjustment mechanisms for track and it, there's no mechanism to lock the saw in the track in case you are making a bevel cut, AKA saw is just gonna fall right off, right? So there's a whole bunch of other stuff that you get when you get a true track saw, but are you getting, you know, the basic function of a track saw, AKA allowing the saw to be on a track and moving it forward? Yes, you can do that, right? So for 250-ish, um, getting this saw, if you're in the Bosch lineup, I'll definitely get that. If you are not in the Bosch lineup, I would probably not get this unless you have the Pro Factor miter saw, mainly because I would just go ahead and get you know the Makita one, mainly because, we'll throw up some clips, the Makita saw, the um, GSH02, I believe is the model number, that saw is the 40 volt XGT saw and with a four amp hour battery put up, you know, similar numbers to this with a 12 amp hour battery, 
you could argue cell numbers. But anyways, the point is that um, that one will fit on this track and it is lighter, right? So that saw the GSH-02 with a four amp hour battery weighs in at a whopping 10.91 pounds and has a faster R top end RPM speed at 6,000 RPMs. And you, it, it's, it just feels better, I think, for some reason in a way. That one, um, the GSH-02, the, the battery slides in on the back, whereas on this one, the battery slides or slides in behind the saw, I mean, on the GSH-02, whereas this one, the battery will slide in, you can't even slide it in because that fuel, that uh, dust port's in the way, slide in right here. So it kind of makes it a little bit longer so that it's more compact on the GSH-02. So anyways, that's what I can really say. Is it a good saw? If you're in a Bosch lineup and you're looking to get it, I would say go for it. If you're not, don't get it. That's my opinion. That's all I can really say. Don't hate me for this, but anyways, that's my opinion. The numbers are, you know, whatever numbers say. So thanks to one of the subscribers on our channel for turning us onto this. So I think his name was Mr. Carter's Rods, right? So thank you uh, for turning us on to the saw. And we actually, after we did that, we ordered this saw and this battery. Now's a good time to tell you nobody sponsored this video. Nobody sent this to us. Uh, one of the sub, you know, Mr. Carter's Rods told us that the saw existed and we had to go out and buy it. Um, so um, the saw paid for with our own money and stuff like that. So I hope this video helped you guys out. I hope you make some informed decisions and brought you some clarity information about this Pro Factor tool. If it hasn't, let me know. If it has, you'll probably let me know too. But anyways, um, have a great day and we'll see you guys next time.